Hi YouTube, welcome back to another video from WTFRC Cars. So, carrying on with the quick vid tutorials for the uh, MB4 Plus. We're going to look into the model memory or the model setting on the menu. So the first one you've got at the very top is how we select our different models. So if we go in and we just choose a blank one. Now looking at it you'd think the next thing you do is set the name but i'll show you why you don't do this so if we just change that if you then go to channel number definition after you've set the name so if we go and change this to fast it'll reset the model so now your name's reset back to flasky07 so don't set your name till after you've set the channel number definition. Now this is for how many channels we're gonna have functionally to set, and this is dependent on what receiver you connect to. Now bearing in mind, as long as they are AFHDS3, so this 12 channel AFHDS3 receiver will bind to this transmitter no problem, but you'll only have a maximum of eight channels. Now, there is a reason why you might want to do this, because any of the enhanced 12-channel receivers, so if we get the FGR12B um, or the FTR flight receiver 12B, not only do these have eight assignable channels, but then you've also got four of the new ports, what you can use for iBus 2 or sensors or other things, so if you're using one of these with an MB4 Plus, although you can only assign eight channels, it does then leave you the four extra ports that are fully assignable and fully usable for iBus 2 or sensors or anything else. So although you can use these, there is a reason why you might want to use a 12 channel one because you've got full eight channel and also you're not losing any channels for the four assignable new port. Um, only difference between using the flight receivers and the ground ones, the ground ones you tend to be able to update from the radio, the flight ones, like I've done videos, you'd have to have the MB4 Plus connected to your FlySky Assistant software and then tell it you want to update a receiver, then choose the receiver and let the assistant update the receiver through it. But they are fully compatible. So this menu, we would choose as channels. If you wanna choose two channel fast, um, that'll work. So it'll give you the lowest possible response time. In reality, I've raced on four channel with the enhanced receivers, full telemetry, never had an issue with latency or anything. Um, but as you see, you set your channel options in here. Then when we come out, you can go in and set your name. So we can set as name then once we've set as channel definitions. Then we move down to radio frequency setup. Now this is telling it one or two things. You can go to update RF. This will update the RF board inside the actual transmitter. Um, you do, whenever you do a firmware update that's got new RF firmware, this menu will pop up straight away and said you want to update the RF. You can click update and then you know that your actual transmission module inside here is on the latest firmware. Then at the top, if we've got it set on AFHDS3 two-way, we're gonna get two-way communication, which means you're gonna get all your telemetry sent back, you'll get your RX icon. When you go to bind the receiver, it'll tell you that the binding is successful. You've also got the Mini-Z Evo modes, and some of these will go straight from the RF module in the actual transmitter. Some of these, you'll have to use the uh, RM005, I believe, which is a module that just goes into the base. So if I take this off, 
you've got a slot in the base, the RM005 goes straight into that, and then it'll let you communicate directly with the Mini Zs. It does reset the model, so you'd have to rebind it. You've also got one way, which will give you even faster communication, as in latency, but you get the RX icon disappears, you get no telemetry back, and when you bind a receiver in one way, you go into bind, you put your, re your receiver into bind mode, and then you just back out of bind mode, you'll see your receiver light go solid, you won't get the confirmation saying bind successful, because it's not a two-way communication. The receiver never tells the transmitter in one way that it's bound. Whenever you switch between these, it'll tell you you need to rebind your actual model. So, that is our radio frequency setup. Then, also in here, you can customize the main menu. So, any of these options that you do not want to use on your current model, you can turn off. You can also rearrange all these, and this is also where you'll find the option to turn on. So if we don't want boat mode, we can get rid of that. If you're not using S SVC, you can get rid of that. If you're not using trainer mode, turn that off. You can also get rid of the help, and you can turn on beginner mode. Now, if we wanted beginner mode to be right at the top of the menu, or as first one, so we can select it and then move it all the way up to the top. So it's now in position one. Then if we back out this menu, you'll see as beginner mode is at the top, and we've also got rid of boat mode and help. So it's really good for clearing up all these menus. And then if we go back into model, and then we go custom main menu, Again, you can get rid of all the ones that you don't want. So if we don't want timer, if you're not using sensors, if you're not using mixers, ABS, channel speed, throttle mid, so depending on what you want to use on this model depends exactly on what you have on here and what order and you can greatly reduce the clutter just having the menus that you actually want so further down we've got the model reset so if we click that it'll just reset everything back to stock so we've got all those menus back and all the settings are back exactly how they were, the original name, the original channel number definition. So it just gets rid of all them. You can go to copy menu and you can select which one you want to copy. So if you've got an RC that has all the options, all the mem menus and everything are set exactly how you want your new one. So we can just copy it. Then we need to select the target. So if we want to copy it to the one we've been working on, we can do that. And then when we go into his model memory, it's copied all our settings to model number seven, which we told it to. Even copies the name, so you can then go in, edit your name, your channel number definitions, your menus, everything will be copied over. So it's quite useful, especially if you're setting up multiple very similar cars. Just remember you need to then go in and set your endpoints and bind your receiver to this channel. Um, but it is good if you've got a layout that you really like on the controller and they're the same number of servos and same setup. Copy memory is a very quick way of not having to go through and set all that up again. And again, we can just reset it if we want it back to normal. And then your import export, it will just tell you to open FlySky Assistant. So it'll tell you to download and install FlySky Assistant to your computer. And then you can use all the import export through there. But hopefully that uh, 
clears up a bit of confusion and gives you a good idea of how to customize your menus, copy your models, set up your channel definition, channel number definitions, um, and the radio frequency setup. Just gives you a bit of a breakdown of what all this is. But thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, share to friends and family, and uh, catch you guys again in the next one.